Have you ever watched an art video and thought, hey, I want to do that? I'm not saying I've never painted loose watercolor florals before, but it's not my strong point. So when I recently saw some interesting techniques from other art tubers, I was inspired to try them myself. The artists I watched are Jay Lee and Own Marwin, and links to the inspiration videos are in the description. Everybody has moments of self-doubt, so I actually did not record that first attempt there. You know how they always say that you should practice a new recipe before springing it on your dinner guests? Well, after years of holiday food fails, I've now learned my lesson, and I just let producer Mike do the cooking. But since I was happy with how this practice piece turned out, I figured I'd do it again, this time on camera. These are the tools I used for that. For paper, I went with Strathmore 400 Cellulose Cold Press, a Neptune number 4 quill, several watercolor paints, specifically Sennelier's Permanent Alizarin Crimson Deep, and two from Da Vinci, Raw Umber and Sap Green. Also, a Jinhao 100 fountain pen with a fine nib, and a Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen with a brush tip in sepia. Not shown there was the plastic drinking straw, because that's what Jay Lee used on his piece, but you'll see it in action later on. I chose to add some line work using the fountain pen, but in my opinion, it was too thin and didn't add much. So that's why I used the sepia brush pen, and it's why I decided to not use the fountain pen on the second piece. But the basic idea was to paint a loose watercolor floral with inking elements and also using a straw to create the branches. There are a couple of paper brands I turn to for my final watercolor pieces, and Arches is one of those. But instead of cold press, I went with rough, uh, just for the heck of it. You can identify Arches' surface textures by the colors they use. The orange cover is rough, the pink cover is hot press, and the green cover is cold press. Actually, I haven't used rough in quite a while, so I figured this was an opportunity to get reacquainted with it. Plus, there was already a small piece left over from a previous project. As they say, waste not, want not. Now, this is a big jump in quality, going from Strathmore 400 cellulose to Arches 100% cotton. In my opinion, Arches is some of the best watercolor paper around, but I think most cotton papers will be superior to cellulose paper. I understand that Strathmore has a 500 series watercolor paper, which is 100% cotton, but I've yet to try it. A couple of other 100% cotton papers are Fluid 100 and Fabriano Artistico. My favorite cotton paper these days is The Collection from Hanamula. I only have the cold-pressed version, but eventually I'd really like to try their hot and rough, too. That's the number four quill brush from Princeton's Neptune line. It's synthetic squirrel hair. It holds quite a lot of water and is one of my go-to brushes. There's that straw I mentioned earlier. Yeah, for the first time ever, I used the straw technique. 
Was it a clean straw, or was it from one of the old fast food soft drink cups cluttering my desk? I'll never tell. For this technique, you just need to have enough paint on the paper that when you blow through the straw, it forms striations, which is a cool way to create the appearance of branches. If I were more social, I'd invite a bunch of people over for painting with straws. Then again, it's probably safer to do this solo, because you never know when someone might take things too far. Then there's sticky margarita mix coating the walls, someone saying, hey now, just put the straw down, and several people leaving in tears. Now, in his piece, J. Lee added big splats of paint before brushing in the flower petals, and I did as well in the practice piece, but that step was omitted for this one. Normally, I'd say that was due to forgetfulness, but this time it was actually deliberate. I simply felt it could do without that extra bit of randomness. Which is funny, considering the piece ended up a tad overworked anyway. Yeah, many of my strokes were hesitant. And that was just me overthinking things. It's not like I can hide it, since this video is all regular speed. So it wasn't all that stressful. I just unnecessarily worried over stroke placement. You can put them anywhere. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The colors are rather autumnal, and I guess fall has been on my mind. I was thinking about picnics and remembered when one autumn, producer Mike and I picked up some fried chicken for an impromptu picnic in the park. We hadn't tried them before, but since Azelle's was close by, that's where we went. And it was good, but not outstanding. However, the ducks at the park seemed very curious. Oh, we did not share with them. I mean, I wasn't sure if they'd eat it or turn on us for consuming their poultry brethren. Neither possibility sat well with me. Hey, I've seen the movie The Birds. That reminds me. When Jessica Tandy's character discovered her neighbor with his eyes pecked out, well, yes, that in itself was highly disturbing, but I was equally upset that while running out of the house, she dropped her handbag. Do you even know the kind of important things that are inside a handbag? Identification, keys, cash, phone, and a carby snack to maintain your blood sugar level, just to name a few. <laughs> yeah, it only took losing my purse once to learn that lesson, and it's never happened again. So whenever I watch the birds, I want to yell at Jessica, Go back for your purse! The dead guy's not going to get up and grab you. It's not that kind of movie. Yeah, I love the birds. It's got tension, suspense, a couple of characters you want to smack, and nature getting some payback. I have to say, creating this piece was a blast, but I realize that several of my recent videos have been of the loose watercolor floral variety, which is fine, but there are quite a few YouTube artists who specialize in that sort of thing. And now that I've explored that a bit, upcoming sessions will feature something different. In fact, I've just tackled a new-to-me medium, which will feature in the next two videos. Oh, what the heck. 
I'm too excited, so I'll just tell you. It's gouache. Yeah, I've only been saying I wanted to try gouache for about a year. Well, I've finally gotten my hands on some. But which brand I went with will remain a mystery for now. See? Things may move slowly in the studio, but they get there eventually. It's almost like watching a drama series. Will Nacho ever find a way out of the drug cartel business? I've recently been binging Better Call Saul, which is weird since I never watched its older parent series, Breaking Bad. But I gotta say, the characters are interesting, and I'm not sure where it's all going. At the moment, I am halfway through season four. Also on my watch list are new episodes of Somebody Feed Phil. One is where he goes to Maine, and another is Portland, Oregon. Maine is on my bucket list, but I've been to Portland, Oregon, and had the best battered fried fish I've ever had. And it was from a food truck called The Frying Scotsman. It's been a long time, and I'd like to go back to Portland again, ideally on a weekend for their really cool Saturday market, but also to visit their fantastic bookstore, Powell's. Saint Honoré Boulangerie and Burial Grounds Coffee are a couple of spots I also recall hitting. We don't often go that far, though. A more manageable trip is within our state of Washington to the Olympia Farmer's Market. It's mostly covered under a large barn-like structure with lots of fun stalls. But for us, producer Mike and I, part of the appeal is stopping at Twister Donuts on the way down and then stopping at Eastside Big Tom's for a couple of their yummy burgers on the way back up. Hmm. Come to think of it, it's been quite a while since we've done that trip. And now I've a sudden craving for double meat, double cheese, goop, lettuce, pickle, onion, and tomatoes. Yes, I'm drooling here. Well, dang, where did the time go? I start talking about food and bam, the video is nearly over. A couple of weeks ago, I wanted to know what you all were doing while viewing, so this time it's my turn. It's now after 8 in the evening, and just before recording this voiceover, I prepared dinner, which was pork sausage links, eggs over easy, and pancakes from a mix. Yes, it was breakfast for dinner. Then I prepared a mug of Bigelow's Constant Comment Black Tea, popped a ginger and honey cough drop, and settled in with my microphone, which is wearing a fuzzy sock to reduce popping. Which wouldn't be nearly as funny if the sock weren't tan-colored. If this sort of painting appeals to you, please do check out the inspiration videos from J. Lee and Own Mar Wynn, linked in the description. They learned it from somewhere, I learned it from them, and now I'm showing it to you. That's the beauty of social media. Creativity gets to branch out and reach all sorts of corners. I'm happy to share this arting experience. I know I'm not the only person to ever take inspiration from others. So if you've got an I want to do that story, don't keep it to yourself. Share with the rest of us. 
After all, the main point of this sort of video is to pass along ideas and hopefully some inspiration too. Until next time, maybe save a straw for the studio. And stay artsy, my friends. <laughs>